Untuk sesi siang hari ini, kita akan mempunyai tema sesi yaitu Managing Equities in Uncertain Times dengan pembicara kita yaitu Dr. Tan Chung Kwai, Founder and Chief Strategist PM Asset Management Sendirian Berhad and PM Asset Management Asia Private Limited. Dan untuk itu langsung saja kami mengundang kepada moderator kita pada siang hari ini yaitu Dr. Joseph Ginting dari Presiden University. Ya, dan langsung saja I would like to welcome to you all Dr. Tan Chung Kwai, Founder and Chief Strategist from Pain Asset Management Sendirian Berhad and PIM Asset Management Asia Private Limited. So please welcome Dr. Tan Chung Kwai. Dan untuk waktu dan tempat saya serahkan kepada Dr. Joseph Ginting. Terima kasih. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to this room. Uh, this afternoon we will discuss about the strategy, the strategy how to manage the funds, especially equity funds, both mutual funds and also offshore funds. Okay, uh, this uh, discussion will be conducted by Dr. Tan Chong Kwai. Dr. Chong Kwai is uh, the uh, founder and strategy for PAIM Asset Management in Malaysia and also in Singapore. So, uh, if I look at Dr. Tan, it's not only the fund manager for the company, but also the strategy and the entrepreneur in funding because uh, Dr. Tan uh, established their, his own uh, company after joining the company in Malaysia for 18 years, yeah, for 18 years. Okay, uh, after this, I think uh, we will have 90 minutes from now. So, uh, I will invite you to discuss in around 30 or 45 minutes after presentations. Okay, uh, Dr. Tan Chong Kwai, uh, we allow you to give your presentation now. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think uh, you can talk effectively. Good. The sound is the sound is good. Can you hear? Very clearly. Yes, very, yeah. Very clear. Good. Relax. Don't get nervous. Uh, okay. I I wait to start now. I let me see. Oh, it works. Huh? It works. Okay. My name is Tan Chong Kui. Uh, I'm more famous in Malaysia. Selamat petang. But I don't speak Malayu so well. So you have to be patient. You have to listen to English. And I, I heard nowadays your English uh, standard has gone up, you know. I, I went to a Chinese school. In fact, when I was young, I also don't speak English well. You know, I, I get a lot of problems. Then I went to USA for five years. And every day you have to speak English. Today, I can speak English better than my Chinese, you know. <laughs> okay, I was born in a kampong. This kampong, we only use well water and we have no electricity. My father is quite smart. He sent me to Penang for education. So I, you know, I, I, I struggle and then I, I grown up, you know. Uh, okay, just to uh, share with you, we are equity specialists. We are not fixed income. Uh, one of the reasons I do that was because uh, equity is very profitable. When you talk about entrepreneur, <laughs> yeah, why is it that I'm not doing fixed income? Because fixed income... The, the income is very low, you know. But anyway, now our investment philosophy, I wrote a book and published 2015. It's now the bestseller. Maybe later on we will tell you. We say profit made are all given to charity. And a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, they are philanthropy. They buy quite a lot of books from us and they send like five copies to all the top 20 universities in UK, in USA, in uh, Korea, in Taiwan, in China, Hong Kong, all the ASEAN country, India, Sri Lanka also. So we sold more than 13 over thousand. It's not a bad book, yeah. Anyway, now our philosophy is that 
How do you handle the volatility of the stock market? It's the biggest headache. When I was in the university, I was wondering how do you deal with this volatility? And it never go away. And the volatility in Asia is exceptionally volatile compared with US, you know. So how do you handle that? And a lot of time you heard the story that you buy the share, it goes up, then it comes down. After 10 years, you don't make any money. But how do you handle that? Uh, that's always my problem, you know. So we develop an investment philosophy, say, we never fully invest at all times. You will sell your share when the market go up. And you will then only have cash and you will only fully invest when the market is at the lowest point. But you need to read the major trend right. Otherwise, you will lose out. We can only sh I can only share with you my performance record, which is a real record. How do we handle that and how do we outperform by such a big margin? Our investment philosophy help us. We also emphasize that, you know, when the crisis comes, you make a lot of money, but don't get panicked. It's just like now, you know, a lot of people get panicked. You know, a lot of shares are also selling at quite a cheap price. But the problem is that when you buy a cheap share, sometimes it goes cheaper first before you eventually make a lot of money. We will show you how we make money in Asian crisis global financial crisis, what kind of return you make compared with your fixed deposit. Today, I would like to convince you that if you know how to manage fund, know how to invest in equity, your return will be far more larger than your fixed deposit. Especially in, you know, but even that, you must know how to deal with the volatility. Crisis create problem is also provide opportunity. Just to introduce ourselves, be patient, you know. I need to sell something in a sense. I need to sell you that, how good we are. Otherwise, you're not going to listen to what I say. You know, it's the track record that's going to convince you that what I say will work, okay? So, just be patient huh? for a while. Then we, we try to give you as much time as you have to ask questions. And that will make this meeting one of the most exciting. I spent 42 years of my lifetime in fund management. I almost spent my entire life in this field. And I have no regret because you will see the record I built. Uh, we started in Singapore in 1995, but actually we started in Malaysia. Hold on first. Huh? Hmm. Okay, we started in Malaysia in 1994. And then we started Singapore in 1995. What does that mean? That means we are almost 25 years old in Malaysia. We are almost 24 years old in Singapore. Now, interesting part. In Malaysia, we manage it quite well and we are profitable every year from the first year for 25 years. That's a very good track record. But that's the company. Okay, now in Singapore, we started as an exam fund manager, but 1999, they licensed us as a boutique fund manager. That means you can take clients up to 30. So, but that is very restrictive. We performed very well. MAS in 2002 make us the first boutique fund manager in Singapore that has a full license. At that time, we were really riding very high, you know. So we then have two full licenses. In some sense, you know, I'm in the same line for 42 years. Beijing University mentioned that he cannot find another Asian guy who has been in the same line for 42 years. 
we practice value investing, which most of you do. Yeah, value investing, you need to understand, you know, when everybody say they do value investing. Very interestingly, at the highest point in 1997 and 2007, a lot of people at the highest point never sell shares. At the beginning of this year, when Dow Jones hit the highest point on January 26, many people also don't sell their shares and they got hurt, you know. So selling is the key. Let's see. I will move a bit. I'm not going to go to investment process because I think you know we do visit company. Last year, we have 11 fund manager. We visited 1,500 company, but we screen them down, you know. If they don't meet our criteria, we don't invest them. We do company visit, we do a lot of fundamental analysis, we, we also look at technical, you know. A lot of people choose us because, uh, you know, we, we are good in value investing. Uh, we have a track record. Uh, we are very focused on uh, small mid cap. We have a very, we have a proven investment uh, philosophy. Uh, these are the shareholders. I'm the largest shareholder. I'm a founding member and I'm the only active member. Quite terrible. Huh? I'm like a very strong key man risk, you know. But I have been a key man risk for 25 years. We are now managing about 280 million. At our highest point, we manage 1.8 billion US. Don't feel bad, you know, when you make mistake. We are bought share, we go to zero, but very few. You make a lot of zero investment, you'll be out of job, you know. Uh, but sometimes you are not lucky, you know. You buy a share, the CEO get corporate governance problem, they got suspended, well, you, you already got caught already. You know, there's nothing you can do. Uh, this is our ASEAN fund, which is now one of the oldest ASEAN fund. Uh, we outperform by a very big... Oh, this, sorry, sorry. This is a Victoria Fund, which is Asia at Japan. And uh, it's, it's uh, started since 2001. In fact, this fund started in 1995 as an ASEAN fund. Then subsequently, we converted into Asia at Japan Fund. ASEAN Fund is very unique. ASEAN Fund has outperformed by a huge margin after 20 over years, you know. Uh, we have won many, many awards. And this is a very exciting time. This is certified by the head of research, uh, Thomson Reuters uh, uh, investment head. He certified that on the 20th anniversary, on our 20th anniversary, the exact date, February the 3rd, 2015, Thomson Reuters said our fund was ranked number one for one to 20 years. That means we ranked number one for one year, two year, three year, four year, until 20 years. At that point of time, nobody has that record. Nobody. And we outperformed by a huge margin. Just to show you uh, the exact return, you know, our ASEAN fund made 497%. Fidelity ASEAN fund make 94%, they were 402% away from us. Invesco, which is also a big name, they were doing 67. Both of them also outperformed the benchmark, but we outperformed by much bigger margin. Why? Why is that? Uh, we're going to explain to you why we are so far away from them. The key is they don't sell share when the market is at the highest point. That's the key. And we don't do that. We will explain to you further how important is the philosophy. <clears throat> we like to show people that our record are certified. You don't claim you certified to people. Otherwise, you are not credible. You can talk all you want, but you don't have the record. The record is mean everything to a fund manager as far as I'm concerned. We also, in 2002, in Malaysia, we feel that we should also start an Islamic fund because it is very hard to run a house without 
sorry, uh, not happy. Uh. Okay. Okay, maybe, okay, I'll slow down a bit. Now, so we started an Islamic fund for the retail people. So, but because the retail people, we felt that they shouldn't take too much risk. So this fund started as a balanced fund. You invest 60% in share, 40% in fixed income. And that is more stable because you don't want the retail people to take too high risk. And plus, our market is very volatile. Interestingly, uh, as at end of July, uh, we were actually, Lipper actually ranked us number one for one year, three year, five year, 10 year, and 15 years. In fact, as at end of September, we are still holding that position. And these are also the longer periods, you know. You take a look, our balance fund, we outperform. We outperform. Hmm. Not working, huh? But anyway, you can see on the yellow one, you know. We outperform the benchmark. We also outperform uh, our... The, when I say top competitor, it means those guys who rank number two, you know. These funds win all the award, three year, five year, ten year. Thomson Reuters Award. Uh, all the award in 2015, also win all the award, three year, five year, ten years, for one six and one seven. So at the end of this year, it's going to be very exciting. You know, we are very nervous. You know, whether we can go for four consecutive years, all the award for three years in a row. We feel very uh, good. You know, and if you look at us compared with the competitor, we are still. Uh, no, never mind. I, I think we, you can survive. Lah, because I go quite slowly. We win so many awards, you know. We, we don't want to go into that, you know. You can go to the website and see a lot of them. Uh, this is our team. A lot of things when you say you're boutique fund manager, they think we were one-man band. You know? <laughs> they think we are one-man band. We are not one-man band. You take a look at the number. Uh, Li Tawei, the third person, actually is a CFA. Uh, Mutiara joined us recently. Uh, Mohsin also joined us recently. James and uh, Pei Yi, Pei Yi, the lady, you know, very sweet face, you know. She got 11 distinction on the high school. And you were wondering why would people like that join us, you know, we are such a small guy. But sometimes they like it because you have a very good coach, you know. They can learn a lot, you know. You, have you heard of the Chinese, you know, say they travel a thousand miles just to find a seafood, you know. Oh, these this are the organization chart, but I don't think I want to go through this. This is my background. You can kind of go and read them, you know. Uh, we have independent director. Now, very important part from here, we were going to explain to you just now, you know, when you have money, what do you do? You can, you can put in your fixed deposit, you know, and these are Malaysia, but honestly, for, for you, for, for you, your fixed, fixed deposit is about 6%, you know, uh, are you happy? Some people, they are not too bad, they say, you know, but a lot of people think it's not good enough. You know, so but these are inflation. Inflation about four five percent. You know. Uh, now, when I take a look at all the index, you know, you look at all the index. You look at the last column. Most of the market can easily give you ten to twenty percent for the fifteen years record. So when you when you when you your saving account is so low, you, you, you will not be happy. So you want to go into the stock market. But many people, you go into the stock market, you get burned, you know, if you don't know how to invest, especially when you go and buy, when the market is very hot, you can lose a lot of money, you know. And uh, also we do a research paper and say, look, if you come in when the market is bad, 
your return most probably will be better than a simple average. So what I'm trying to say is that if you want to put part of your money, of your saving money into the stock market, put them when the market is bad. After that, you may lose a bit of money for a short while. You don't have to be too panicked, you know. i give you an example. I put my money eh, on Dana Magmore Fund, which I mentioned just now. Uh, it was launched at $1, so I bought at one o two. That means I bought two months later. I put in 100000 Two years later, I put another 104000 and I was buying at one forty. Today, today the fund, 204000 becomes 700000 Your simple average is at least 17%. So, in Malaysia, your saving account is only worth 3 to 3.5%. Three so, you, you can see, you know, equity will give you a better return, but you must have a long-term fund because in between, they can go down, you know. It can go down. I give you an example. Yeah. These these are just the charts, you know, just to calculate the simple average for you. You know, they are all more than ten percent. You know, and by CIA Japan index is nineteen percent. Singapore Straits Time is ten percent, ten point seven five. KL KL index is about eleven point eight seven. Hang Seng is about. 14.73 ASEAN fund is about 20 you know so I'm just going through but these are all the crises uh, interesting I have actually gone through all these crises I I actually uh, start working in 19 uh, I graduated oh wow, my gosh you know I'm getting so old already um, I Graduated in 1967, was high school, uh, 77, 76. I graduated in 76. So if I graduated in 76, I've gone through Black Monday, 1987. Any, anybody here experienced uh, Black Monday, 1987? Huh? Any one of you, huh? If you're 50 years old, you should go through that. What's so important about 1987? On the day, October the 19th, Dow Jones dropped 508 points. And that's 22.6% one day. I think the whole world collapsed. Hong Kong, Malaysia, everybody just collapsed. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, Hong Kong closed their market for four days. And Malaysia closed one day. And they go for immediate delivery. So a lot of people cannot sell shares. But right after that, when they released again Hong Kong, eh, 1987, they closed down four days. First day they opened was 30% down. You know? So those are the crises. In fact, 87 is quite funny, you know. The economic growth rate was very good. Very good, and it collapsed. It's external force because U.S. went and increased their interest rate. I think five times within a very short time. So, so you, do you realize that everybody is so nervous about interest rate movement? Because 1987 really gives you a lot of problems, you know. And of course, we have gone through U.S. recessions and Asian crisis is very important. I'm going to show you how bad is the crisis, you know. Yeah. So you must know how to handle volatility. Tax bubble is quite bad, you know. And how do we go through all this bad time? Black Monday, within a short time, KLCI dropped. 52.54%. Whoa, you know how bad it is. And some share dropped 80%. Just to show you the... 1987, I was voted top fund manager. At that time, I was the head of the largest merchant bank in Malaysia. What did I do? 
the market somehow was helping me. The market was shooting up before the crash. So I sold all my shares, you know. So it was mentioned that I have 65% cash. And when the market crash, 100% you outperform your competitor. If your competitor is fully invest, what does that mean? They were hurt fully, you know. They were hurt fully. And I only get hurt 35% because I only have 35% shares. Now, what does that mean? Market crash becomes so cheap, you know. The guys who is fully invest got no money to buy shares. That is the biggest damage I have. Although people say it's going to be a recession for three years, but say, how can that be? The share dropped 60, 70 percent. I went back and buy the shares. At the end of the year, our top three fund goes up 27 to 35 percent. We rank number one, number two, and number three because we went back and buy the shares. I'm going to relate this. Huh? We are very much the same in 1987 this year. What happened to January 26, 2018. Dow Jones hit the highest point. And what happened to January, February and March? Our market dropped quite a lot, you know, including April. So selectively, if Dow Jones hit the highest point when our market was very high, if you start reducing exposure, you'll be much better off, you know. You'll be much better off. Why I mention about 87 and 2018 is because the economy is still quite good. It's just that the price are very high. 1997 is different, you know. Asian crisis, the market was, the economy was so bad, you know. The guys just go down, you know. And more fundamental, 2007 also the same, you know. 2007, US is facing so much problem. Their, their property price dropped so sharply, they were really having a lot of problem. So that weakening justified a bit, not that the market go down. Uh, but this time is very confusing. It's the overvaluation that is going to catch you. Asian crisis is about the worst in my life, you know. I'm 69 years old. Asian crisis was the worst. You know why? You take a look at KLCI, you took a look at the FTSE ASEAN index. What a shock, you know. A lot of people really depressed, you know. Yeah. See how sharp it dropped, you know. 9798, it was very dropped, very sharply. This happened in Asian crisis. I actually have cash. So I bought Unisam in Malaysia. Less than two years or one and a half, I make 763%. Dialogue. Dialogue is the worst, you know. When it first listed, it went to $51. It crashed down to $312, you know. I bought them, it's 10 times, you know, went less than two years. PT Temple Scan is one of the worst. The guy just crashed down to 400 you know. Also, we bought them. And PT Temple Scan gave us 14 times, you know. Also, two years only. The crisis is very interesting. You need to watch them. Because when someone wants to sell the share, and they must sell the shares, and if your unit trust has redemption, he must sell the share and clear it. And if it's tightly held, the guy just go down. You know? So that's why we say, why do you need to fully invest? When you fully invest, you have no cash. And, 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 and a, a lot of Westerners, they like to fully invest. They say, you cannot get the timing right. But our market is very volatile, you know. 
So we, we cruised them through. We made quite good money. And uh, we, we did very well in 97 and 98. In fact, I remember we managed for Employee Provident Fund of Malaysia. 1998, we outperformed the benchmark set by them by 29%. You never heard of that kind of numbers, you know. In 1999, I outperformed another 36%. That was our star, you know. Just to, just to tell you uh, that is important, you know. Uh, we also have a very lucky shot because uh, on tax bubble time, the tax bubble, the share gone up so high, you know. We, the crash come from February 2000. By February 2000, we sold almost 90% of our tax stock away. And the guy continued to go up. Now, that's the biggest problem because at the high point, if you sell share, you can temporarily underperform. A lot of people don't want to temporarily um, underperform. They keep on holding. The minute the guy crash on it, you're knocked out already. So my advice to you is when the market is very high, you take some profit. Even though the share continue to go up, don't get too worried because when they crash down, they crash down very sharply, you know. That's the complication of fund management, you know. Yeah. Then 2000, we also go into Korea, we go into Taiwan, um, we go into India. Now, tax bubble, the Indian stock got hit the worst. In fact, that was the first time I went to India. I have no experience, you know, so I go to India. I only know that India is so cheap, you know. So within less than a few months, actually, we went and buy a few good stock and then make a lot of money out of it. Then you, this is also uh, around tax bubble, food junction. Anybody go to Singapore and gone into food junction before? Food junction is a food court. So this guy is Taiwanese, you know. He say he want to lease. I say, how do you lease? It's September 11, the market is so bad, you know. And then he say he want to lease at a very high price. I say, what kind of nonsense, you know. Who knows, who, who knows about food court, you know. But he was very good, you know. He's a very exciting person. So I say, why don't we make a deal? You lease at the lowest price and I will take you out so you don't have to do marketing. So he listed at the lowest price at 20 cents. You will want to be a, in the search stack, the lowest price you can set is 20 cents. Two years later, we sold off for almost 200% profit. He's very good. He, he ran the food court so well. You see, then I say, how do you stop people cheating you, you know? You know what he did? Uh? He put a camera on a cashier. Actually, no one can cheat, you know. It's all captured. You can't cheat, you know. You have to go there, pay, and a camera is there. And they run it very efficiently. You know, water management, collecting cash, cleaning the place very well. But now, they are, they are the CEO left, you know. This is also our easy shot. You know, we're lucky. We buy, buy this oil and gas stock and it gets so hot, you know, and it went up a lot. Subprime is another crisis. Now, I want to mention about Astra Agro. That was in 2008. That was in global financial crisis. You know how fantastic is Astra Agro company? They are the largest plantation in Indonesia. Although I think uh, the other one is um, Agri, Golden Agri. Golden Agri is listed in Singapore. Actually, Golden Agri is the largest plantation in Indonesia. But if you use the definition, Largest plantation listed in Jakarta, Astra Agro is the biggest. 
But very interestingly, such a good company, uh, one day before Deepawali, I certainly see that Astra Agro drop. Astra Agro limit down. I think your limit down is at least 10%. Now, what did I do? I went and buy at 8,002. Less than a few days only, you know. Less than two weeks only, you know. It go to 4,006, you know. You know how much I lost. Huh? But when it was 8,002, huh, it's already dropped. Can you, do you have a calculator? It's already down like uh, 60 over percent, you know. My gosh, you say you're a good fund manager. Within less than two weeks, you're down another 20, I think, percent, you know. From 8,002 to 4,006, I think, 30 percent, I think. So, limit down. Next day, Deepawali, I was at home. I was watching TV. And I said, how come, uh, Today limit down again, two days in a row, you no. Know? It's such a good company, no gearing, you know. Third day I went to the office. I called up my officer. I said this guy is selling like it's free, you know. So I went and parked it there. Another I asked my officer, another limit down is what is the price? He said four thousand six. It's the limit down. So I say, you go and park 4,006 million shares, you know. Lunchtime, nothing happened. Three, four o'clock, he was so panicked, you know. He said, everything done at 4,006. And by coincidence, uh, that was the lowest price in history, you know. But in my entire life, uh, very hard to buy a share that hit the lowest. That's what I'm trying to say. It is not possible for you to buy at the lowest. Shares are very different. You need to know how to deal with this volatility. One of the reasons is that you want to be a fund manager, you better be mentally very strong. Otherwise, you, 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 you get migraine, you know. Yeah. Bukit Asam, we also did quite well, and then some of the China stock, you know. Those are the benefit of crisis, you know. Uh, 2013, there is a mini Asian crisis, if you can remember. But these are some of the shares. You know, Adikaya is very interesting. I came to Indonesia. I went to their office and I somehow find out why is this share so cheap, you know. So I bought them. By coincidence, the timing was good. Make a lot of money. And a couple of them, you know, I, we, we actually... Inari is one of the best company. Inari, we make a lot of money out of Inari. It's a semiconductor company in Penang. Did very, very well. This share really make us win a lot of awards, you know. And we also have some extra Penta Master. I, I want to talk about hibiscus a little bit and to show you that when share go to the high point or the low point is very important. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh. What's so significant? You know, when I say Hibiscus, Hibiscus is an oil and gas company. 2014, first half. What's so significant about 2014? Anybody knows? Oil price go to above 100. Well, that is really very high. And uh, Hibiscus is the first uh, company that is allowed to list in Malaysia without a track record because they are pioneer, you know. They are pioneer in oil and gas. They listed at 75 cents. They must invest. They invest, but then not doing well. It went to 270. They came to my office when it was 20 cents. They say the bank want to give them a hard time. So you need to do a rights issue. Now, what did we do? I said, look, this company is funny, you know. Dropped so badly, very good management. But they have no debts. 
Why is it so bad? So we bought the share, actually. We bought the share at 18 cents. So today, the price is still about $1. This one gives us a lot of money. Because at that time when we bought the hibiscus, $37. Now it's about $16, you know. I'm going to move a bit more. You know, some of these are crises, you know, we buy them. I don't want to go through too much because some of these are, you know. Now I'm going to share with you some of our philosophy, some of our experience, and then I can explain to you. Now, this is very interesting. Okay, uh, uh, this is very important. I'd like to explain, you know. You read, fund managers are not willing to sell share in the rising market because they are likely to underperform even they, though they are temporary. You know, that, that's the biggest headache, you know. And uh, people don't want to do that. They are greedy. Uh, let me share with you this one. Mm, unfortunately, it doesn't, hey, how come, huh? It works, you know, huh? Huh? but it doesn't work on the wall. Yeah, you, you see, 87 crash is here. You can see uh, it drops subtly, right? You notice, uh, you know what I did? Uh? I was underperforming for the last five months. You know why I was underperforming? I was selling shares. So when you sell share, the share continue to go up. You underperform, you know. Actually, uh, if the market don't crash, uh, I think my boss will sack me. Because I'm nearly, you look at the last point here, the last point here, the last point here, it, the outperformance almost finished it off, you know. The minute it crashed, I was, I was quite alert. I was young, you know. Oh, I said, this is so cheap, man. So I went in and buy, you know. So you look at the outperformance, by the end of the year, the outperformance is so huge because I bought a lot of cheap shares. Huh? I did this again in 2013. You take a look. Huh? You take a look. Morningstar ranking. I was holding 25% cash on January and the market continued to go up. You know what happened? My ranking go from 7 to 42 to 56 to 52. I get fed up. I think the market is too... I sell some more, you know. Then I was lucky. The, the market just crashed, you know. And, and I went and buy again. Look at my ranking. By July, number one all the way. In fact, I was number one for the next one and a half years. That shows how important is the selling. But a lot of people are not willing to underperform. That's the problem. So what do you do? You need to do in-house research, you know. Yeah. This year is interesting. My ASEAN fund, uh, <laughs> we were ranked 84 in April. You know? I was selling shares. Certainly the market just tanked, you know. So I have cash, I go in and buy. We were number one until September, you know. This is outdated. Just to show you how important it is for you to sense that it's overvalued, you know. So your future. If you want to be a fund manager, it's very importantly, you sense how other people is going to do, you know. It's very important. Dana Magmo did the same thing, you know, when in the January, the market was very high, we sold the shares. And Dana Magmo has very, uh, we are only 30 over percent invested. Then when the market tank, uh, we went in and buy we go from underperformance to outperformance, you know. So it, it's very interesting. I mean, everybody make money, everybody manage their fund differently. But you, you need to find a formula how to outperform in the long run. We are lucky, you know, we follow our own philosophy and we have been successful. Uh, We are challenging that we should not fully invest at all time because if we don't fully invest at all time, we think we can do much better than if you fully invest at all time. 
when you say fully invest at all time, maybe that when, when, what it means is that at the highest point, you're too fully invested, you know, you're not selling shares. And as you can see, our 20 years track record, the difference between us and our competitor, you know, how far are they from us, you know? Now, very few people know the lowest, you know, it's very difficult. Because when someone insists they must sell the share, it goes down, you know, you sell the share, it goes down. You don't need any fundamental one at some point, at some point, especially crisis time. Take a long-term view, you know. Share is a long-term instrument. If you have short-term money, I think please don't go to the shares, you know. Yeah, winners are people who can buy share which you think that share will perform. Never hesitate when you think it's just too high, you know. Trying to buy the lowest and it's not realistic, you know. I'm just sharing with you my experience, you know. Studying the cycle is very important because it will help you to, to outperform. Considering increasing your exposure when the market you think is low, you know. Market is not efficient. If you think market is efficient, then you are wrong, you know. You don't buy a share just because it dropped. You buy because you think it meets your criteria. You think it's a good company. So every time you see a share crashing, you, you, you don't get too nervous, you know. If you can, then just study a bit more. Otherwise, you know, the guy may just go bankrupt, you know. Knowledge is important, you know, your experience, you know. Sometimes economy is not equal. One of the biggest mistakes people make is that they think economy is equal to market performance. Economy is not equal to market performance very often, you know. Especially, you know, people say, hey, the market still, the economy is still very good, it should still go up. But you must realize if the share is already so high, you need to know how to figure it out with. Okay, I mean, selling at a loss is no big deal, you know, we make mistakes, you know. Now, this is very important. I would like to emphasize this, you know. The crisis came. Uh, please look after a lorry gear company and they can grow and they are cheap, you know. That's very key. Yeah, businessmen who are very focused, you want to, do, you want to buy them, you know. In some sense, if you are a good value investing, at the high point, you want to get out. At the low point, you must go in. In the long run, if you have a pension fund, you will do well, I think. Reading major trends is important, but, you know, it's not that easy also. Whenever people say, I buy share for long term, but you should take a higher risk when the market is, you should take the stand to buy when the market is low. Uh, that is very psychological. Buy a share with many want to buy. Okay, I'm about to end, you know. I hope you can ask some questions. I publish this book. It's now a bestseller. We sell more than 13,000. Most of the top universities like Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Cornell, all have this. Oxford, you know, Cambridge, you know. Uh, also, the way we sell is good, you know, when we say, you know, profit may go to charity, you know. So that, that's very good. Uh, it's also in Chinese version now. You know, one of the entrepreneurs, very Chinese, you know, just buy a thousand books, send five copies to 200 universities in China. 
Uh, last year, I was. Uh, there was a time the this guy is nuts enough to call me Warren Buffett of Asia. I was in Beijing University last year. This Saturday, uh, Beijing University, so-called the best university in China, uh, invited me to give a talk. Unfortunately, in Mandarin, which is quite 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 headache, you know. Uh, I can speak Mandarin. Uh, last year, they invited me to speak on One Belt, One Road on their eight economic forum. Uh, they invited eight speaker. I was a second speaker. Quite an honor because I'm not a Chinese, Malaysian Chinese, you know. Uh, this is 2018 this year, huh? May in Euro Money in Singapore. I, I, I do participate like, when someone invites me, you know, sometimes. Uh, this is my Malaysian team. We also believe in recruiting one boy, one girl, you know, one Chinese, one Malay, you know, we do that. We are very disciplined people. The boy and the girl, they don't collude, you know. They don't have a situation, they all walk out at the same time. We lock them up further because everyone joins us, sign three-year contract. And their contract don't expire at the same time. This is my Singapore office. We have people ex MAS, we have people ex GIC, you know. So, uh, this is interesting, you know, just, just to show you. I'm not saying that I'm recommending you to buy, you know. Kino, you should know Kino. Kino has not done well for a long time and recently done a bit better. PTPP, look at all the construction company, you know, Adikaya, all drop like anything. We can. Uh, this one I like a bit better because it dropped more than anybody else, you know, among the group. This one is what? Sumarecon, is it? Why is it not performing recently? Anybody property analyst here? Huh? Any property analyst? This is an oil and gas company. Dr. Tan, can, can we go to discussion? I'm done already. Already. Okay. okay, any question you can ask already. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll give you uh, three questions. One, one, two, three. Okay. Your first one. This, uh, the ladies. Okay. First of all, thank you for your very fruitful presentations. Uh, we have shared your s successful stories about uh, selecting shares. Any good governance for cut loss policies? Can you share with us? Mm, okay, I, I, I think it's a good question. Actually, cutting loss is up to you. You have to analyze them. You know, one of the ways to switch. Now we don't have a cutting loss policy. Uh, it, it's not totally bad because we do keep on taking a look at it, and we are not happy. Uh, we will switch. But don't forget, uh, many shares, uh, they drop 40% and after that they can go up 10 times on, you know. So that is very tricky, you know. So why do you want to have a cut loss policy? You know, the key is to continually see analyzing the stock. But to be fair also, when a share sometimes not performing, because people just don't like the share, so you may really want to just cut loss and switch to another counter. But the recommendation is that be careful uh, when you buy a share so that you don't have to face this situation. You are down 40, 50, 60 percent, you know. A lot of share, they can drop 70 percent and bounce up, you know. Uh, but we, 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 in some sense, we, we hopefully that, you know, you are not overweighting the loser. The whole ball game about portfolio management is to overweight the winner and underweight the loser. And as long as you can do that, you, you can do better, you know. And more brave, be more brave when the market is bad, you know. But you must have long-term money. Don't forget, equity is a long-term instrument. Like for example, employee provident fund of Malaysia, social security of Malaysia, and a lot of pension fund. You only need to be very disciplined, need to have some know-how, our simple know-how, please take home with this. 
buy company that is low gearing, buy company that can grow. Why would you put money if you cannot grow? Buy a good management. Buy the share that has dropped, you know. Yeah. Just like, you know, at the moment, of course, property is not popular. Unfortunately, palm oil is facing a very difficult position. It's not easy. You cannot overweight that kind of a... But you don't mind having some, you know. You are lucky the guy drops so low, you know. You buy some. Also, oh, sorry not to be too long-winded. I, I hope I answered your question. Uh, there, are other, there are other competitors of ours. They have a cut loss policy. 40% only cut already. But I find not necessarily, you know. So ending story, investing is an art. You can talk all you want, you know. You talk long enough, it becomes true. <laughs> and then sometimes, you know, it just go haywire, you know. Especially when the market crash. Okay, second question. Okay, second question. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Tan. Uh, my name is Ardo. I'm from IPMI International Business School. And my question is, uh, you said that um, you prefer stocks that have a lower PE, uh, pricing ratio, and, and, uh, uh, and uh, good growth. Yeah. So uh, you see that this is a long-term uh, instrument. So uh, how, many, how many years uh, back do, uh, do you see to evaluate, to examine uh, whether this, uh, this uh, have a good uh, long-term growth? maybe three years or five years. That's the first question. And second question, uh, when, do you, when you select stocks... Before you go on, and let me answer your first question right away. Before you talk so many, I get confused. Huh? Okay. Now, first question is that when you say you future growth, your backward is important, but not that important anymore. He can grow for years, and that may be the max and going down, you know. It's the one year, two year, three year that's important. You know? But if you have a view that this company is going to grow for the next three years, plus they have a very good backward track record, then that's good. Your growth has to be future. But it's not easy. Because it's actually not easy. You know? Because you just imagine he's the CEO. He lied to you. How are you going to track? It's not easy. But you can track. You must try your friends to track him down, you know. Okay. So it's a forward looking. Huh? Yeah, Look. it's your future growth that is very important. Your backward, you know, is only, it's just like me, you know, today I'm showing you all this record. They are all history, you know. And I know that all my life, you know, every time I got my award, is history, you know. Mm -hmm. I, next day only, I, I keep on hopping on it, you know. That's how we can go so many years, you know. And it's a very difficult job. Okay, sorry. Okay. So history does not always repeat itself, yeah? Yes. Okay. Not all the time. You not look at palm oil. Okay. Palm oil used to bounce back so well every time it goes down. It's also big. I'm not saying that it will not come again, you know. It can come back. It depends on how you see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, second question. Uh, when you uh, look for stocks, uh, select s stocks, do you consider the, the ownership of the company? Yes, it yeah. helps. How, how much do you... Uh, Very hard to say. In, like, maybe you, you to prefer say. to uh, like state-owned enterprise or family-owned? I, I think if you study whole entire 20, 30 years, it's very hard to track down like that. What we do, uh, we say we like the person to be very focused, you know? You do one business, and you do well, you know, and he, he will continue to do that. So if he's focused, chances that he will do well is there. But not true, you know, sometimes they make mistakes. In between, they get so successful, they go and do some stupid thing, you know. Your question is really not an easy answer. I hope I can give you a formula, you know, and then you go home, no. It's very complex, you know. Fund management is actually far more, uh, far more complicated than that, you know. You every but to me, I want to see your one year, two year, three year growth, you know. Growing with low gearing, I, you can gear a lot and then make a lot of money. I will be very careful 
because your other investor, you must read what other people want to do. Your other investor is not going to be happy with that. And you watch out, they're going to sell the shares. And that won't perform. Putting speculation aside, you know, people go and speculate shares, you know. They technically, they do this and that. But let's cut that out. Some of the company, look at Inari. When we first invest in Inari, they make 20 million. This guy is arrogant. Oh, sorry, man. He hear what I say, you kill me. People think he's arrogant. He said, I'm going to make 64 million from 20. Nobody believed him. And then certainly, his distributor was asked by US, said, look, you cannot recommend this company to your client because you own the share there. When the guys sell, limit down. But actually, that was the best time to buy share. Nobody believed him, but actually he didn't make 64 million. He made 90 million. What a shock, man, the shares. Uh, it, that's why you know the, your future is very important. Then subsequently, they make 150 and 150 and 200, 250. Wow, I tell you this share, uh, uh, that's the kind of share you want. We bought big earlier. So we... We trim down. Every share I have is a free share. But it's, it's, it's also a bit of luck. And recently, they have a bit of setback for the last two, three weeks. It's very complicated, but, but, but uh, you, you somehow can sense, uh, you trust him, you think he's growing. You just imagine the guy first year make 20, 20, boom, the guy just run, you know. You, you happen to buy at that time, you make a lot of money. That is the kind of stock you want to go after, actually. Growing, low gearing, the management is dynamic. Okay, that's that, that. Sorry. Can we go to... Th that th question? Yes. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, it's a very interesting uh, presentation, Dr. Tan. And then... Uh, you, you're saying that uh, you start selling when the market is nearing the top. But uh, how do you know when the market is nearing the top? What sort of indicators are you using to evaluate whether it's time to sell or uh, whether it's just stay? Good question. Not easy. But okay, let me tell you what I did. Huh? How do we handle this volatility? Do you know all my life, you know, I just do that. Every market, we have 25 years of data. The high and the low. You know. I, tell you, I tell you all my secret, it'll be our job, you know. <laughs> the high and low. It's the market PE that's important, okay? And the sector PE. One at a time, market PE. Now, you see, uh, at some point in 1997, you know, your market PE you know, is already the highest compared with all the past year. You know. What do you do? A lot of people do nothing. That is very clear. 97 was the highest point. Economy was so bad coming up already. Not all the time you can track it like that. I give you one example. It's Kuwait. When Iraq attacked Kuwait, the oil price goes up. That was a shock because nobody think that Iraq dared to attack Kuwait because USA is there. But they went in. The share just tanked. You know, that was very unexpected, I must say. Now. Before you go to the high point, you got hit. But at some point, uh, 9707, it is so clear. The economy is not doing well already. Now, just take the more recent one, the oil and gas. Oil and gas. First half, 2014, oil price was 100 plus. Many share borrow like anything. Go from 7 PE to 35. You tell me, is that obvious you get up? They are not getting out. They still predict the oil price will go to 150, my friend. My gosh, you know. And I actually say, hey, hello, I make enough, like, you know. 
I make enough money, I come in early. The key is to always come in early. Find an emerging star. Find an emerging star. And that you make a lot of money. See the CEO, see the management, the guy wholeheartedly work for you. That's the key. Honest guy, integrity, very hardworking. You know, just like us, you know, um, my first client, 25 years, still with us today, you know. You need somebody who likes you, you know. Okay, sorry, huh? I, I siphoned a bit off, but to answer your question, not all the time you can track it, but many times, you know, you're so lucky that before the crash come, it went to the highest point, you know. You get out, you got a chance, but you are not getting... Tax bubble is the same. There is just no profit there. The share can sell 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 PE. You're not getting out. You know, you know. I mean, you laugh. I'm more specified, you are there. How old are you now? How old are you? Are you 40s? Yeah, you should know a bit now. No? Okay, sorry. Any more questions, okay, my friend? Okay, I, before I, I need to, to take a taxi to the airport already. Can I have... Uh, okay, any more questions? Dr. Uh, Tan, before I give you... I have one question. So, do you have a redemption policy in your fund? Redemption? Yes. Do we have because redemption? Because you, you said that uh, all uh, funds must be fully invested. Oh, okay. No, no, I... I you see, in Malaysia, they don't have that rule, no? In fact, we are the one who even convinced GIC that mm -hmm. you should allow me to catch up to 50%. And in fact, Employee Provident Fund of Malaysia, we also have convinced them, and they allow us to catch up 50%, which is good enough, like, in my view. Now, uh, I think insisting fully invest at all times on the volatile Asia, I, I, that's why we are trying to make this statement that if I don't invest, I, I don't fully invest at all time, I can do better than the guy who fully invests at all time. Mm -hmm. Am I answer your question? Okay. Uh, three questions next. You? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I see you uh, from your... Uh, uh, successful track record that you are very good in uh, managing the Islamic equities. So uh, how do you see the Islamic equities performance right now? Still good. Yeah. Islamic Still equities good. or uh, Islamic You see, Islamic, Islamic is equities. almost like social investing, you know. They, they, okay, one thing about Islamic is that Islamic is a bit closer to religion. So they don't do pig farming, they don't do brewery, they don't do casino, and they do do defense. I think that's good. That's good. I feel. In fact, I never invest in casino, and I. I don't see why I should support that. So it, it's my personal liking, you know. Uh, our Islamic fund, I think, also somehow very lucky. You know, somehow we did very well. We win all the award three years in a row. Nobody has ever done that. And even before that, we win. This coming year, you watch how we're still doing very well. We will, we will win, but we will win all. Last year, not only that, no, we win three years, five years, 10 years, 15 years. Thomson Reuters say we don't give 15 years because very few people last more than 10 years. But that's not smart, isn't it? But these are Western, you know. But anyway... Okay, uh, uh, sometimes you need luck, you know. Actually, somehow, this Islamic fund is very lucky. Now, first luck, uh, I tell you. Asian crisis came. Islamic fund cannot invest in bank. I tell you, you have traditional fund. You have bank, you are knocked out already. All the bank just collapsed in 08. Islamic fund don't have banks. And during that era, wow, you really uh, outperformed, you know. The traditional fund, you know, or conventional fund. Sorry, any okay, more question, uh, Doctor Tan? Uh, you said that uh, your Islamic fund, uh, especially in Kuala Lumpur, 
already reallocated into 60% in equity and another 40% in bonds. What type of bonds? Oh, we must buy the Islamic bond. Government or uh, corporate Government bonds. also. Corporate also. But you must be approved by the Sharia advisor. Mm. Okay. They will look into their financial and they will make sure that this corporation, corporation mm. when they issue a bond, the company, when they have cash, mm. they buy Sukut or other Islamic product. How, how do you maintain the allocation stable? Because, uh, you know, the, the equity, especially based on Sharia or Islamic base, is very unique. And then, you know, sometimes you could not see uh, the narrow of uh, the price in Islamic because because the the, the basic of uh, is Islam. How do you maintain that the, the stability? How do I maintain the stability of investment in the uh, Islamic equity? No, I can't catch you. Okay, sorry. Uh, look at this. Uh, for example, in Indonesia, we have a. Uh, we have selected 30 stocks. 30 stocks? Yeah, 30 stocks in okay. Indonesia. Okay. And then most of those uh, stocks okay, is very, very, are very, very volatile. Mm -hmm. Because we select, mm -hmm. we select the most liquid stock in the market. That's mm -hmm. one of the, our criteria when we select mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Islamic uh, shares. Okay? So, it means that uh, the share is very volatile because based on the liquidity. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Islam said the stability. The the one stability. Yes, the the Islam regulation wants stability. I I think to be fair, this become very religions uh, to be fair because for us we have our own evaluations, but. We go by the Sharia advisor, who is third party, who got nothing to do with us. But the Sharia so, is selected so, by using the regulation of Sharia. Sharia, I mean, they have a Sharia advisor, a whole bunch of them. Okay. They, uh, and yeah. it's, you must be approved by the government. Mm. And one thing very advanced about Malaysia is that when you list the share, the Security Commission has a whole big team, you know, to evaluate. On the first day, he will tell you whether this share is Sharia compliance. And that makes our investment very good. Now, whether you, your whole portfolio is volatile or not portfolio, then it depends on the fund manager already. How did the fund manager want to select uh, something that is less volatile? And when, when you can do that, then you can sell your fund very well, you know. You don't do well, you don't sell well. You, 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 you are so volatile, they won't buy your fund, you know. Yeah. I hope I answer your question. Yes, okay. Uh, any I more questions? More questions? One or any others? Okay. Just... Oh. Good. My... Yeah. Uh, Hello. Yes. Just wondering for your Asian uh, fund, you invest in uh, uh, different markets, right? And then... How do you uh, handle the uh, currency, currency exchange uh, okay, risk? Uh, do you leave it open or do you... We, we are not that big. Huh? We are not that big. So we, just do, we certainly don't hedge the currency. Now, very simple because hedging currency is expensive. So what we do is that when we buy share, we need to be very careful. We must make enough to handle my, my currency risk, you know. But sometimes when you read it wrong, you also got a problem. So ending story is that, uh, you know, if the share cannot give me 30% per year or 100% three years, four years, I just don't want to invest, you know. But it's not easy. It's not easy. Fund management, you know, it's always, you know, sometimes it goes against you, you know. Uh, if you don't have, uh, you have, you're mentally, if you're mentally not stable, you're mentally not strong, I think that's not a job you want. You destroy your your family life, everything. You know, it's not easy. Okay. Uh, anyway, Doctor Tan, Doctor Tan, uh, uh, you said that uh, you invest or you reallocate your funds in many countries, especially in Asian, right? In uh, Thailand, Indonesia, or Singapore, others. Uh, don't you? 
use hedging policy for this? No, I, we, we are generally not that big. You know. When you say hedging, we are mentally hedged. Lah, you know. say, say you know, we think rupiah is weaker. You, know. you make sure that you only market weight. You, know. you make sure after you sell the share, you quickly want to convert into other currency. But uh, that are just natural, you know, but we are not like, you know, uh, going to short it or, you know, buy another option to cover that, you know, we, we don't do that. And in, in your policy, how many percent you use uh, fundamental analysis and how many percent technical analysis? We, we are basic fundamentalists, but to be fair, sometimes you cannot say you totally don't look at technical because sometimes the public know more than you, you know. So the share already having a lot of problem and you are not making enough effort, you know. So we should blame the info uh, info star, you know, info vesta, you know, that you know, I shouldn't be spending my time here. I should be studying for my clients, you know. Right? I try not to do too much of this thing. Uh, a bit of national service, you know. A bit of social responsibility uh, I share with people and I also tell them that there are certain things you can do, certain things you can't do. It's not, you know, I mean, the worst thing is that you are so ignorant, you run into big trouble, you know. Uh, I felt that my entire life, I've, I've done as much as I want to do in my life. I, I'm uh, Asian and I developed my own philosophy. I tried very hard. I knock them out, some of them, you know. So uh, I want to add value to the industry and I want to add value to the society and I have nothing else to do in my life. So that's uh, very simple. Okay, uh, uh, we still have 10 minutes for discussion. Uh, Bapak dan Ibu, bisa tanya dalam bahasa Indonesia juga. I like to, I will uh, translate the questions. Silahkan, kalau mau tanya dalam bahasa Indonesia, silahkan aja. Okay, uh, before the questions, Dr. Tan, yeah, in the first uh, meetings <laughs> this afternoon, I said that uh, you are not only fund manager, but also entrepreneur. Yeah, my question is very basic. Why did you move from uh, professional to entrepreneur? entrepreneur? Okay, let me put it this way. All my life, you know, you see, I'm a very independent person. So when you report to the German, we report to the English, you report to Singaporean, you know, they have their own view. But I'm actually quite naughty, you know. And I think I'm very much better than any one of them. What, what a shock. Quite a terrible, arrogant person, you know. And I think this cannot go on, you know. I tell you one example. 1993, when the market was at the highest point, I told my boss, you sell all the share you have. You don't do that, you're going to suffer like anything. Our Sustec Fund, which win Micropel Award in 1993, that fund grow up 241% US dollars one year. And I say, look, you better get out for your life. November, I resign because I have a license in Malaysia. And I was the first Malaysian who ever gave a license and allowed to invest overseas. Oh, that is very significant, you know. And uh, they didn't sell that. And the fund, uh, I tell you, the fund 80% disappeared on the following year. The whole company is just gone, you know. So that's so how important it is to sell at the high point. Don't get greedy. Most of us, has enough money for the rest of my life, your life, and you only need a good health. If you don't get a good health, you have a lot of problem. And you don't really need, you know, you want to take a moderate risk and an above average return. You don't want to go to the max, you know. And you only need not to cultivate uh, expensive habits, you know. Okay, uh, any more questions? Ada pertanyaan lagi, Bapak Ibu? Silakan, silakan. Mau bahasa apa bisa bahasa is asal jangan bahasa isyarat. <laughs> silakan. Oke, okay. please. Saya ingin 
saya ingin tanya tentang tadi ada catatan bahwa kalau kita beli saham your name please pak uh, nama saya Surya dari dana pensiun Pupuk Kaltim pak tadi ada catatan dari dokter Tan bahwa kalau kita beli saham bukan karena harganya sedang jatuh tetapi karena under value Nah, kira-kira hal apa saja yang paling penting kita lihat bahwa saham itu sudah under value? Mungkin uh, pandangan da dari dokter Tan. Terima kasih. Uh, terima kasih, Pak. Uh, he is Pak Surya from uh, Pension Fund of uh, Pupuk Kaltim from uh, Kalimantan. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, the question is, uh, you said that uh, we must buy the, the shares based on value, okay? Uh, how could you define the value of the stock? Ah, good question. Exciting. Value is in your eyes. Why some shares sell 200 PE and sell, some sell 3 PE, you know? Now that's where the complication is. Why are people not selling all their share when the market is at the highest point? Value is in your eyes. That makes investing an art. No, no answer for you. Value is in your eyes. It's just like beauty, you know. The girl is beautiful to you. To some other people, it's not. You know, beauty is in your eyes. Value is in your eyes. One step further, justice is also in your eyes. There's no justice. There's no value. <laughs> Complicate, no? Does it answer your question? <laughs> you don't believe there's no the, value. The answer, you know, is very special. Why a certain share sell at 200p <laughs> and certain share sell at 3? Then where's the value? Where's the justice? Oh, it's very interesting. And, in, in, and yet you want to be in this job. But there is certain way... You know, it's a difficult way. It's not a straightforward way. Your mind must be flexible. You know, I put an art there. Buy a share which every other people you think want to buy that share. He's not talking about value, you know. He's talking totally technical. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I hope uh, uh, you need to learn that, you know. Value, there's no value in some sense. You know? Thank you, Dr. Tan. It yeah. means that uh, we do not need to take my, our CFA. I spent my 40 years, 42 years of experience with you. I Thank have gone you. through a lot of things which no one can explain, you know. Okay, I, I got uh, some uh, knowledge this Any afternoon. Any more questions? No, uh, I think uh, already enough, but Mr. Dr. Tan hmm? already finished. Already? Yeah. yeah, already finished. I'm finished. Okay, I'm done. I'm okay. I'm <laughs> going to go to the airport already. Thank you so much. Huh? Yeah. You, yeah. This, this seminar is very good because you make it good. <laughs> you make it good. Because I think I wholeheartedly, sincerely sharing with you. I have no problem at all. And I'm very happy. I'm very happy today. You make me very happy because you are a very good audience. Thank you so much. Yeah. If next time you see me, yeah. you can introduce yourself because I, I, you know, I can't recognize a lot of people. And sometimes people think I'm arrogant, but I'm not, you know, I'm a very nice guy. Okay, Dr. Tanda, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Tan, for the very insightful information, ya. Yeah. Dan terima kasih juga kepada Bapak Dr. Joseph untuk memoderatori sesi kali ini. Dan kami persilahkan untuk kembali ke tempat duduk. Terima kasih, Doktor.